are being diverted from interior drug checkpoints and the northern coastal borders to Rio Grande Valley. The administration is even asking for people to volunteer to come to the border to help with the, we can't say the word, but it is, it's a crisis. International You're watching news now from Fox. Right now we are listening in as House Republican lawmakers speak out against what's going on at the southern border. And right now I am joined with Steve Romero. He's a professor at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley in the Criminal Justice Department, also a retired federal agent joining us to kind of break down what we are seeing at the southern border. And Stephen, first of all, thank you so much for joining us on News Now from Fox this morning. Well, Ray, thank you for having me on, on your show. Thank you. So earlier this week, U.S. Customs and Border Protection revealed more than 100,000 migrants were apprehended in February, and they are saying that this is close to a 30 percent increase. First and foremost, let's kind of go back to break basics right here. Why are we seeing such an increase in migrants crossing the U.S. border right now? It's because the migrants uh, have felt they've gotten a message from this new administration that there was going to be a change in policy, that it would be more welcome. So now these individuals that had uh, had waited or had been deterred are now heading to the border because they've seen that they think they have a, a, a better chance at getting into the United States. So a so lot of lawmakers have a more have sympathetic administration, a more sympathetic administration. We were just listening to remarks from Republican lawmakers and their thoughts were along the same lines. They actually directly blamed President Biden's administration's immigration policies for the influx. Based off of your experience, would you say that this is accurate? I would say it was uh, not totally accurate. We've had a broken immigration system in this country for long before the Trump administration, long before the Biden administration, long before even the Bush administration and so the Obama administration. So we haven't had a comprehensive immigration plan in place. Uh, President Bush tried to do that. Uh, the last President Bush tried to do that in 2013, uh, but that comprehensive immigration bill, which would have given the additional funds for having more administrative judges so we wouldn't have these backlogs of hearing cases regarding immigra immigrants or asylum seekers. And so the system is broken. It was broken way before President Biden got into office. And since Congress has, re has not done its job in passing a comprehensive immigration bill, this is what we're looking at now. The other thing is with this country not uh, not giving the amount of aid it needed to support these Central American countries, these people are leaving those countries because they're they're torn. They, they don't have an economy. They're taken over by criminal gangs such as MS-13 in El Salvador. And so they have no place to go. They're just like the immigrants of earlier years. They're seeking a better life. That's why they're heading here. And, you know, there are reports of an influx of undocumented children migrants that are actually crossing the border. So a lot of people are saying that this isn't even a political issue. It's more of a humanitarian crisis. Well, I would agree it's both. Uh, again, these individuals are sending their children to out of harm's way. That's why these individuals, these families are separating or selling their children or trying to get into the United States because they want their children to have a better life. They want them to be safe. And so that's why there is a push to send their their children over there, even at the risk of separation. And so they find that that is a better, better alternative than to having their children, uh, especially young girls, young women, uh, being abused and sexually assaulted down there in the Central American countries. And also their, their grown uh, male children or, or uh, their children being indoctrinated into these criminal gangs. So that's why they're sending their children to the border and for them to try to get a better way of life in the United States. Now, there's been a lot of talk about the United States Citizenship Act of 2021. It's the Biden administration's proposed immigration reform plan. First and foremost, what exactly in this plan and if it passes, when can we expect this legislation to go into effect? I, I really don't know if it will pass. Uh, right now, they have a razor thin uh, majority, if you can even call it a majority, I mean, when you have 50-50 in the Senate uh, and they're, they're uh, in the House of Representatives, Democrats have a very slight uh, margin. You have some moderate Democrats that I don't know if they're going to go along with it. So that's, that's going to be a very hard 
uphill battle and push for this administration to get passed. Uh, I think it's been overdue to have a comprehensive immigration plan. There needs to be a pathway for citizenship for individuals that have been in this country and been functioning in this country, such as the Dreamers. Uh, and this plan will address that. Uh, the other thing, asylum seekers, we need to have a better plan in place. And the other thing is we can't be uh, incarcerating children. I mean, as they did in the past administration, putting children in, in lockups and then separating them and then unable to find their parents after they're trying to return them. Uh, that's unequivocally unacceptable. So this administration has a help bill battle, but it's necessary that we do have a comprehensive bill. And hopefully President Biden will negotiate with the Republicans to try to get this plan done. But I don't think it's, I think right now it's just too, too, uh, we have too many extremes on the Hill in Washington where people are, are pretty much steadfast in their position and don't want to compromise. Now, Steve, you're joining us from Edensburg, Texas. It's about five hours from Houston on the southern part of the state. Have you had any contact or what's your experience with asylum seekers in that area? Well, the asylum seekers, again, they're coming here because they're trying to escape, especially El Salvadorians and, and Guatemalans, Hondurans, uh, El Salvador, especially uh, MS, MS-13. It's a criminal gang, uh, a criminal gang that's taken over that country uh, and they're terrorizing the population. They're terrorizing regular individuals, regular families, and they see no other alternative but to seek asylum in the United States because again, they look at the United States as a place of freedom, a place that you can have a new beginning uh, as most immigrants have looked at the United States. And so these asylum seekers are just trying to get a better way of life and escape these horrible conditions that are going on. No economy down there, there's no jobs. Uh, there's criminal gangs that are, again, indoctrinating these children that are males into their gangs and women being sexually abused. Uh, it's unacceptable and that's why they're sending their children, that's why they're coming to the United States trying to seek asylum because of that. You know, this is something that we've been covering for a little bit over a week now and I think sometimes it's very easy to get lost in the facts. So Steve, what do you think is the most important thing for our viewers to know about this situation? Well, the situation, we need to deal with it in the long term and we need to start with getting a comprehensive bill where we do have a pathway for citizenship. We do have a method to uh, have these individuals that are in our country at this time. And also a policy dealing with asylum seekers. Uh, they are genuine asylum seekers, which are running from bad situations. The other thing that this administration needs to do is to, to provide some type of aid and get down there and to help them build those economies back. So these individuals will have a life, have the, the potential to to grow up in a safe area and for them to want to stay home and to be productive individuals in their own country and the united states can do that by providing aid and going down there and helping these governments uh do that have law and order in these, in these countries without an economy you can't have law and order and so that's what we need to do is build those economies and start helping with aid so that individuals will not want to come into this country Steve Romero with the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. Thank you so much for joining us on News Now from Fox. You take care. Thank you, Rain. You too. Have a good day. Bye. This is something that we will be covering in depth as the situation continues to unfold early next week. We do expect to hear from House lawmakers, Republicans, as they travel to the southern border wall. So we will continue to bring you all the latest information right here on News Now from Fox. But right now, I will send some of you all to a very quick commercial break. But stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 